Howdy, Ego Hackers! Today, we embark on an enlightening journey to explore the complex and intriguing concept of the four sides of the mind. Basically, the general structure of everything we've been talking about. Why was this not the first episode? Our exploration is set to deepen our understanding of these distinct aspects of our psyche and their profound impact on our personalities and behaviors. Before we dive into the descriptions of each side, let's understand how these four sides function within us. The concept of the four sides of the mind suggests that our personality is not a single, static entity, but a dynamic interplay of four different aspects, each with its unique perspective and functions. Like, generally people see themselves in a certain light, usually as the guy that does this one thing, and it's usually through the lens of their hero, like, oh, I'm the funny guy, or, oh, I'm the clever guy, or the strong guy, or there's, you know, variations of that. You know, the guy that can endure, the disciplined guy. Usually people have, like, a one word that describes them, and it usually resembles their hero in some way, shape, or form. But, you know, sometimes you get this weird sensation that there's an aspect of you, and you're like, where did that come from? Like, you know, imagine the ENFJ, you know, that is so concerned about how the group feels, and is very caring, about hospitality, and it, they're suddenly like, yay, car parts! Or I fixed a dishwasher, I hung up a picture, as my mom would be like, I'm not just a dumb girl. It's like, yeah, cool. Am I supposed to agree or disagree or... <laughs> or you get the ESTJ that is like, you know, the star football player, the high achieving athlete with so many accomplishments like valid Victorian, and, you know, they're going on their way to college to be like a lawyer or something, but all of a sudden they're like this philosopher dude. They get super deep into the mysteries of life. And, you know, they get super sleepy, you know. Or, you know, you get the ISFJ that is like this super stoic, indisciplined man. And then suddenly they're just one of the funniest people on the planet. Or you get me, you know, Mr. Robot INTP with no feelings. All of a sudden getting these deep feelings of self-loathing and dread. And I'm just like, why is this happening? Samwise.exe crash beep boop. Boop boop, the simulation is no more. <sighs> I have great news for you. This isn't some kind of possession at all. All of these, where did that come from? Is you, just a different side of you. And these sides of you balance out your default you. The reason we have multiple sides of the mind instead of just one is because relying on only one side of the mind would be akin to using a single tool for every task, no matter how inappropriate or ineffective it might be. Just get a shovel. Like, here's an example. Let me console this crying child with logic. There'll be worse problems for you in the future, kid. See what I mean? I gotta use extroverted feeling. There, there. These sides of the mind work together, influencing our reactions, decisions, and how we interact with the world around us. They represent different layers of our consciousness, from the most accessible to the deeply unconscious, and then the superego, yeah. <laughs> Let's put the lid back on that. So, let's briefly discuss each of the four sides of the mind. The ego is the default you, as I like to call it. It's the primary conscious self, actively engaged in daily decision making and social interaction. It's where we are more comfortable and assertive, representing our core identity and how we usually see ourselves. In personality typing, the names assigned to each personality type, like ESFP, INTJ, are based on the characteristics of the ego. This means, for instance, when someone is identified as an ESFP, it indicates that their ego, or their conscience, day-to-day -day self, aligns with the traits and cognitive functions we associate with the ESFP. You know, SE hero, FI parent, TE child, etc. The ego is the aspect of the mind that we identify with the most and is usually the most developed and dominant in our interactions and perceptions. Exceptions may apply for those with traumatic upbringings. And then we got the subconscious the supportive and deeper aspect of our psyche, often coming to the forefront in familiar or comfortable situations. It influences our instincts, hidden desires, and provides a sense of comfort and familiarity, often reflecting an alternate version of ourselves. And that alternate version is basically the exact opposite of us. But it's awesome. Then we got the unconscious. It houses deeper, less conscious motivations and fears. This side is a storehouse of our unprocessed emotions, deep-seated fears, and fundamental drives. It silently steers our long-term desires and motivations, often unnoticed. You know, things like the critic function, where it's like, oh, I want this. I'm going to try to pretend like I don't want it. Oh, that didn't work out? I'm glad I was right. No, you're not glad. Watch the critic video for more information on that if you're curious. 
And then we got the superego, symbolizes our internal challenges and the potential for profound growth, often playing a misunderstood yet crucial role in our development. It's where our deepest insecurities and hatred lie, but there is a lot of unexplored potential that most people don't tap into. It challenges us to evolve and transform. Those are the brief descriptions of each of the four sides of the mind, but there will be separate videos for each of them in the coming week, so stay tuned for that. Before we go, however, I want to touch on each of the four sides of the mind and the function that they're associated with. The ego is reigned by the hero and the parent function, steering our conscious choices and social interactions. The subconscious utilizes the child and inferior functions, revealing our deepest desires and potential, particularly in supportive environments. This is where we aspire, is through these two functions. The unconscious employs the nemesis and the critic functions, subtly influencing our fears and hidden motivations. There is much wisdom to be found in these two functions. And then we got the superego, which engages the trickster and the demon functions, often representing our internal conflicts, hatred, but untapped potential for growth, as well as love. For a more detailed exploration of the hero, parent, child, and the other cognitive functions, I suggest you delve into Season 3 where we cover the attitudes of each of these cognitive slots. Link will be in the description below as well as in the comments. As we wrap up our exploration of the four sides of the mind and their representative functions, we understand that these aspects collectively form our complex personalities. You're not just one thing, you're a lot of things. And that's awesome. Being well-rounded and whole is a good thing, and we hope to bring you closer to that versatility. In future episodes, we will delve deeper into each of these four sides of the mind, exploring their nuances and implications in more detail. However, if you're aware of your type, you can check out Season 2 and watch Who Are The, Your Type, and then boom, you got a quick explanation of the ego, the shadow, the subconscious, and the superego right there for you. But of course, we'll go into more detail in the future videos, so stay tuned for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay curious and explore. Do some cool new stuff. I'll catch you guys on the next episode. Later.